Hello and welcome to our first look at the AMD Ryzen platform and how it applies in the studio. I don't think I've seen this much anticipation now in a good few many generations as to how a new chipset is going to behave for audio usage. We've seen early benchmarks that promise us a great deal in how the AMD platform is going to perform, but we have a different set of metrics in the audio world and it's those we'll be looking at today. AMD has developed a whole new platform this time around with the focus on improving the low-level performance and raising the IPC, otherwise known as the instructions per cycle figure. As ever, they have been keen to keep it affordable and certain choices have been made to keep it competitive and to some extent, these are the right choices for a lot of users. The chipset gives us DDR4 memory, but unlike the X99 platform, restricts us to dual channel RAM configurations and a maximum of 64 gigabytes. This has a single M2 connection option for a single high-speed NVMe drive and 32 lanes for the PCIe connections. Early testing with the available drivers to us have proven to be quite robust so far, with the stability being great for what is essentially a first-generation release of a new chipset platform. The AMD Ryzen chips, just like their Intel counterparts, all have a standard base clock speed as well as a turbo speed. The X series as well also have the extended frequency range option, which will allow the chips to self overclock if there's enough headroom and if there is enough heat and cooling capability there. Whilst running the audio benchmarking, we tend to lock all our chips off at their turbo speed. This ensures the best performance to cooling to power usage capability. We've done much the same here as the chips were running fairly close to the top of their stable range. So you'll find that we've run the 1700X at 3.8 GHz throughout all these tests. One of the early interesting reports has been the CPU ID benchmark result. In this test, we see the result that shows that it may shape up to be one of the best performing multi-core consumer grade chips we've seen yet. We've replicated the test here and it does quite clearly show that it does look promising. Geekbench is a well-trusted cross-platform CPU benchmark, often used for comparing PCs and Macs. In a single core performance in this test, we see it reflecting much like the previous test. The multi-core this time around, while still looking strong, does look to be set considerably further behind the 6950 beating score found in CPU ID. So moving on to our more audio-centric benchmarks and our standard door bench test is first up. Designed to load test the CPU itself, we find ourselves here stacking plug-in instances in order to establish the chips against the baseline level. The AMD itself proves itself strongly in this test, placing mid-range between the cost equivalent of 6-core Intel 6800K and the far more expensive 6900K 8-core. With the AMD 1700X offering us 8 physical cores along with threading on top to take us up to virtual 16 cores, this at first glance looks very much to be in line with where we'd expect this sort of performance to be on this hardware, whilst remaining at a very keen competitive price point. So next up with the testing, I wanted to try a few more real-world comparison tests. So first up, I've taken the door bench test itself and restricted it to just 20 channels of plugins. I've then applied this test over each of the CPUs in turn. The 1700X stands up well against the 7700K, but doesn't quite manage to match up with the Intel chips found higher up in the range. In a test like this, where we're not stressing the CPU itself or trying to overload the available bandwidth, the advantages in the low-level microarchitecture tend to come to the fore. Next up, we've taken the 8 Good Reasons demo from Cubase 8 and tried running it across the available CPUs to gain a comparison in a more real-world project. In this instance, the results came back fairly level across the two high-end Intel CPUs and the AMD 1700X. The 4-core mid-range i7 scores poor here, but this is to be expected of course with the obvious lack of physical hardware to power it and to handle the processing load found within this project. For the next test we grabbed the These Arms demo from Sonar and replicated the test process once again. The test results this time around are a bit more erratic with a certain emphasis looking to be placed on the single core score as well as the overall multi-core score. This is the first time we actually see the 1700X falling behind the other Intel results. In our testing in other segments, we've seen some of the video rendering packages and even some games exhibiting some performance oddness. Obviously we have a concern here that there might be an overall weakness that needs to be addressed. So looking at this result in Sonar, we decided to take the results and keep those in mind when we dig a little deeper. The 
The crackle you've just heard is quite apparent when we try the Doorbench 6 test. This test takes a number of channels of audio and then loads multiple contact instances on top of it. Much like the regular Doorbench test, we keep adding more polyphony until the audio starts to break up as the CPU itself overloads. With a high track count of audio coming out of contact like this, it makes a great test that can reflect some of the more intensive real world usage scenarios and just demonstrates to us how well the system can low balance. The results we see here start to outline one of the key weaknesses in the Ryzen configuration, with it becoming quite apparent that there are bottlenecks elsewhere in the architecture that are starting to come into play. At the lower buffer settings, the test tends to benefit single core performance with the Intel chips taking a solid lead. As we slacken off the ASIO buffer itself, the cores start to become more efficiently used with the AMD utilization of the CPU rising from 70% up to around 85% at the higher buffer settings. Although it is until the 192 buffer setting on the ASIO drivers that the performance catches up the Intel 4 core CPU once more. This appears to be one section where the AMD performance still seems to be lacking compared with the Intel family, be that due to hardware bottlenecks or still not quite having caught up with the overall IPC handling. Intel, by contrast, even at the tightest buffer setting, still manages to start around the 85% CPU usage level and very quickly scales up to 95% and above meaning that at this point in time, the Intel hardware seems to be better optimised for handling low latency workloads in real time. We've seen across the test done so far that this generation of AMD CPUs has certainly made a lot of performance gains, especially compared with previous generations and even compared against competition elsewhere in the marketplace. However, with the bottlenecks and concerning the load balancing that we've seen here in our initial testing, there's certainly some concerns that it may not pay off in a studio machine that is dedicated purely for audio. Certainly going forward, as the chipset is fine-tuned and drivers continue to improve, we expect further generations to certainly advance upon the very solid base ground that we've seen so far. As the silicon continues to be refined and the drivers continue to be developed, we're sure this whole platform moves from strength to strength. Indeed, there's a very strong baseline to work with here, or through obviously our concerns regarding multi-core handling and load balancing at this stage make us a little bit reserved when recommending this as a standout solution for audio PCs in the studio at this current time. Although certainly the platform has plenty of pros and cons to be considered.